Good afternoon, everyone. We'll let everyone join us for just the first few seconds. Well, good afternoon and welcome to our September Ranching 101 webinar presented by Ag Trust. Today, you will hear from two game wardens who will provide invaluable insights into the upcoming shooting season, including essential safety measures to ensure a secure and enjoyable experience. Gain expert knowledge directly from those who ensure regulations are followed to protect wildlife and enhance your safety and compliance with legal guidelines. Before we start, please join me in a short message from Ag Trust. When your passion is agriculture and a rural way of life, you need a partner who understands. That partner is Ag Trust Farm Credit, formed from two trusted farm credit associations. Our mission is to provide personalized financing tailored for full and part-time farmers, ranchers, agribusinesses, and rural homeowners. And because we live in the communities we serve, Ag Trust Farm Credit is here to help you succeed. Well, at this time, I'd like to introduce our guest speakers, and I'll let Randolph McGee and Steve Stapleton introduce themselves. Uh, just as a reminder, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, uh, please feel free to submit them in the chat box or the Q&A box, and we'll make sure to get those answered um, throughout the webinar. So Randolph and Steve, I'll let y'all take it over. Hey, uh, really excited to be here. I've never <laughs> really done anything like this. I've done a lot of things, but uh, I've never really done anything like this before. But uh, but yes, my name is Randolph McGee. Uh, I'm a Texas game warden, been a Texas game warden for a little over 20 years. And um, like I said, excited to be here today. And uh, we'll you'll get to probably know a little bit more about us here in a little bit. But my supervisor, and uh, I'm under supervision at all times. He had to be on here today because uh, he wanted to know my whereabouts. And that is Captain Steve Stapleton out of Canton, Texas. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. Uh, um, so, Randolph, I'm already alarmed at this uh, this event because uh, Ren, if that is her real name, said that uh, we're going to give invaluable information. You and I haven't given valuable information in the last 15 years, so I'm not sure what's going to be new about today. But, hey, I'm excited to be here and to uh, to utter nonsense. So take it away. <laughs> okay. So, Steve, <laughs> she wanted to know about the ups, uh, upcoming shooting season. And I said, well, sure. And <laughs> sure. I didn't sure, really I know can. what that meant. <laughs> yeah. How many yeah. things can you shoot? You know, we uh, <laughs> dove season just started up uh, up here. And yeah. I don't know, it depends on what part of Texas you're in, whether you're seeing doves or not. So mm -hmm. how many yeah. can you shoot uh, if you're not seeing many, Steve? <laughs> Zero. So, well, but, I, well, what do they shoot? Well, okay, my question is, what are we finding them shooting when there's nothing else flying? <laughs> right, right. So so let me let me give a little bit about me. Hey, so, so I live down here in Mayberry, USA, which is Canton, Texas, which is the county seat for Van Zandt County. And Van Zandt County is known as the free state. Uh, it's uh, a little wild, a little woolly. And uh, uh, shooting seasons are all the time here, day, <laughs> night, anytime. They, uh, for the locals, the, the general rules, Randolph, like this book here, the, the, yeah. the general rules they think are just limited to suggestions, you know, just loose guidelines to follow. But uh, over here, hey, they'll, they'll shoot, you know this, they'll shoot whatever they can find. Um, and if they can't find anything like that, they'll shoot something else. So, hey. <laughs> or cows, maybe one another down there. Yeah, yeah. I, well, that happens. That happens too. Sure. So, anyway. Hey, tell anyway. them a story. Hey, what about the Kestrel up in Grayson County last week? Hey, well, we, that hadn't went to court just yet. So we can't talk too much about it, but let's, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk in general terms. Hey, one of our good game wardens is, uh, hey, doing what we do, open a opening morning in a bird field, right? And, uh, hey, he sees two guys over near a bar ditch. Hey, uh, hey guns, hey, guns kind of banging away over there. So he makes an approach, pops out of the ditch, says, hey, state game warden. And he goes to check on me. And we're, Randolph, we're trained observers. And, uh, <laughs> hey, he sees a dead kestrel sitting in the middle of the road. 
Now, uh, for our listeners, what it what is a kestrel? Hey, it's it's a little hawk. Mm-hmm. Like actually, actually, hey, we'll get specific. It's a little falcon. Yeah, mm-hmm. very a very cool, um, protected as you well know. Anyway, um, he walks up to the guy and says, "Hey, uh, you know anything about that?" And <laughs> it's a father and son, and the dad goes, "I think I do." I think he shot it and points at his kid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but we got him back on the, the right track success, Randolph. So that is right. And mm-hmm. uh, hey, teal season just opened up. And uh, hey, for the listening crew, I don't know if you know it or not, but uh, we have a brand new reservoir up there in my county, mm-hmm. uh, and that's Lake Bodark. And uh, it was uh, teal season opened up. Not many people come to it. Uh, it's still kind of new and um for whatever reason they didn't come up there they wasn't seeing any birds but um but yeah it's a it's a fun little lake and i invite anybody uh that's out there to come up and take a part of it a really good fishery really scenic up there so y'all come on up and see that yeah yeah hey but, uh teal season okay just while we we're in the shooting seasons we're going to stay mm-hmm. on topic here <laughs> hey uh teal season little blue wing teal hey you can shoot six of those little rascals and uh, they are they are quite tasty. Hey Randolph, yes, I, I, I forgot to tell you at the start of this, hey, because we we've really never done something like this before. Hey, uh, we're going to play a game that uh, that David Letterman used to play. Okay, okay. <laughs> and at the end, and I'm a, you're going to make a guess, and Ren's going to make a guess, and and the other two people that are watching this, they can make a guess. May I but, taste uh, your dinner, please? No, no. <laughs> B- better than that, am I wearing pants? Hmm. Yeah. Don't give away your answer right now. Think about it. So we'll find out. Everybody gets a vote. <laughs> you can drop it in the chat box below if, if you want to answer. <laughs> oh, wow. Randhead. Hey, something else I want to talk about, too. Hey, Randolph, uh, I'm not sure if you've heard the latest news, but uh, and I know it's going to hit you kind of hard. But hey, P. Diddy got arrested. Hey, uh, yes. Uh, yep. Hey, uh, hard times these days. Hey, if you need to take a personal day. Or whatever, just let hey, let me because I know it's going to affect you. I was anyway. telling Bryn when I first got here. I said I am having, I it is tough times. My little squirrel dog died yesterday. <laughs> I heard about little that. Squirrel I'm dog, sorry. and then I look up that P did he got and died it. So I'm oh, thinking, what God. is happening? Oh my! Hey, so for so for the viewers, hey, um, and we're way off topic now. So we're in the we're in the sweet spot now, Randolph. Uh, hey, Randolph, a couple of months ago, hauled off and got not one. But two squirrel dogs, uh, which you don't see anymore. You really don't. And they come from uh, Wood, Wood County, Texas, down there by Lake Fork, Yanis, uh, from a game warden friend of ours. And uh, this whole saga with these squirrel dogs, and the, I think the viewers will know this, has been like an episode from where the red fern grows, if that resonates with anybody. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, hey, what happened, man? And and maybe a little mix of old yeller. Huh? Just yeah. hey, two wow. little dogs got a bad bacteria. We thought it might have been coccidiosis. Uh, some symptoms of parvo. But both of those tests were negative. And uh, good country vet up there saved one and did not save the other. So, mm. and what happened? And oh, it was my, my favorite too. I feel bad about <laughs> that. Always. It, it always is. Hey, it's always is. out there with cattle. Hey, if a cow's yeah. going to die or one happens, it's you're going to be your best one. Yep. I've been to live that. So. Yep. Yep. Hey, it's kind of like bird dogs. Hey, you can go out and get the best high powered, most expensive bird dog, and it's going to get run over. You know, yeah, yeah, it's just say hey, the way the way it is. So, but you can get attached to those little fellows. Yeah. So. <laughs> More shooting season. Um, Hey, what, uh, in, we are talking to a bunch of uh, cattle ranchers and stuff up there. Mm-hmm. And what we're finding out up there in our country is, uh, and you probably know these thermal hunters, mm-hmm. these guys out there hog hunting and everything and just seeing uh, they're not used to it and uh, taking a pot shot at a uh, calf or mm-hmm. something laying out there. Yeah. So uh, y'all watch out for that. And y'all please yeah. get us tag numbers and let us know when that's going yeah. on. Hey, so it's, it's funny for those listening – you know, hey, in the old days, everything was a spotlight with these guys. Hey, all these all these little hooligans we chased, they were all running a Q-beam spotlight, right? And a, and a what, 22 mag, 17, 243 rifle. And these days in 2024, 
like this coming this coming season, hey, when we stop people, you won't see a Q beam anymore. Everything is thermal, and often it's more than just one. Every rifle's got one on it, and and uh, Randolph, not only does that rifle have a thermal on it, what else does it have? It has a suppressor, and you sure does. <laughs> Yeah, it sure, it sure, just about everybody we run into is running a thermal on a gun and a suppressor. So, makes it hard on the game warden because we used to spend a lot of, a lot of nights up on a hill looking for lights. And now that ain't, that ain't so. So, I I keep having somebody in my ear over here. Do you know Mike Boone? Do you know Mike Boone? (laughs) I said, yes, I do know Mike Boone. Hey, do I ever know Mike Boone? Is he, is he listening? and I don't know. I don't know where he's at, but uh, he is popular <laughs> in this building up here. Him and Larry Hand and uh, Marvin well, Wills. Hey, you Zach know half, Havens. Yeah, hey, you know half them Cattle Rangers are all retired ex games. Yeah. So well, then they asked me. They said, "Is the TV show fake? Is it?" I said, "Yes, it is fake." Yeah. I said, <laughs> "Mike Boone is way, <laughs> way more meaner <laughs> in real life than he is on that show." So. <laughs> Yeah, they had that, to, hey, to be honest, a lot of editing went into Mike Boone on that yeah, show. Yeah, but to be honest, do you think we could really make Mike Boone up? I mean, <laughs> I, I, yeah, Hollywood's not that good. Come on, yeah. So, oh yeah. Hey, but I hear he's making do as a good cattle ranger down south. So he is yep. good. Hey, good on him. Hey, and if he's listening, hey, to all these retired wardens that are listening, uh, I want them to know that today for me is a is a contact data day. Okay, <laughs> and that doesn't mean anything to the general public, but to them that. That's funny. Yeah, yep. real funny. So, oh, my God. Hey, what else about shooting seasons, knowing your limits, seen, Randolph? Yeah, mm. hey, I went to uh, – hey, I get these questions all the time, and I think I'm a knowledgeable game warden and everything, uh-huh. and I'm on top mm. of things. Uh, but it can – hey, I went to uh, – Grand Isle, Louisiana, the other day fishing. On purpose. Yes, on purpose. Oh, wow. uh, There's something you don't hear every day. Getting Hmm. down there on the fishing regulations down there, I needed a game warden and an attorney with me to figure out, (laughs) you know, to figure out what to catch and what to keep. So, yeah. Uh, hey, so, so for the public out there, hey, listening. So, in, in the old days, uh, like this, uh, this is my only prop I have, Randolph. So, Mm -hmm. anyway, um, hey, in the old days, this was it. And it was relatively easy to understand. Uh, it, you know, it was it, this is supposed to be written on a sixth grade level, right? And if that's the case now, me and you are still in fourth grade, which is, deb- right. is debatable. Right. <laughs> debatable. Right. But uh, I, I, I think the public knows, but I'll reiterate, hey, game laws, game seasons, uh, conservation law is incredibly complicated these days. And... Um, and we and, make it and, complicated just to catch people, right? Hey, well, my dad says that. Now, my <laughs> yeah, my dad's convinced that we make it so complicated just so we can pay our salaries, which is not the case, by the way. <laughs> and ask my dad how he knows that. So anyway, uh, he may have been on the wrong side of the law every now and again. But anyway, so hey, it's it, the just so y'all know, we have to look at this book regularly to stay up to date. And it's hard. Hey, we we play a lot of dial a friend, you yeah. know, where, hey, we'll get into a pretty heady case and the laws are so complicated. Hey, we we have to dig around and make sure we're seeing it the right way. And the weird thing about, you know, wildlife laws is they change every year, you know, because that's the basis of wildlife management or these laws, which, hey, give and take on seasons. And that's how we regulate the populations. And so they're in constant flux. So, hey, what and, hey before turkey season, y'all look at that book, uh, according to what county you're in, mm-hmm. uh, hey, there's been some uh, drastic changes on turkeys uh, in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and actually, if any of you listeners, if y'all have some turkeys in the area, uh, me and Steve really don't like them. And yeah. we like to we like to catch so, one every So, the, tur- the turkeys, are we talking about Mike Boone again or no? Yeah. yeah yes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, hey, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. And, and hey, nobody likes technology. Tr- trust me. Um, and I'm sitting here looking at my little black box. And as I'm saying this, most of us have gone away from that book and we're using the app on our phone. And so if if the folks at home don't don't have that app on your phone, yeah, you need to. 
that's what I predominantly use. It's a lot easier to toggle around and find things and answer your questions specific to your county about where you're at. So, hey, you can talk into your phone now. How many dove can I kill in my county? Yeah. It pops right up there in five seconds. I'm beginning to think that this internet thing is not quite the scam I thought it was. You know, for a while, mm -hmm. I thought it was just kind of a fad and would kind of come and go away. But now I don't, it almost acts like it's here to stay, you know, but. I think mm -hmm. Ren had a question. Ren, you got a question for us? Yes. Well, I actually um, was looking at our uh, questions that our attendees were um, asking, and one was actually asking just to explain the new turkey log um, mm -hmm. in some more depth. Go with it, Randolph. Well, uh, hey, I've got to look at it myself, but I know I, I do, but uh, I, because it, uh, it is it is brand new and it depends on a, it's on a county by county basis. So uh, up there, yeah. for example, where I live, yeah. um, it we go under the eastern regulations and uh, not as many turkey as there was five or six years ago. So that's why they're changing that. And uh, they on the public hunting land up there made it by permit only. So uh, it's not, you just can't drive up there and go take a turkey now. And uh, we have Highway 82 dividing our county and mm -hmm. south of Highway 82 uh, cannot kill a turkey. And it's only mm -hmm. uh, one turkey per licensed hunter up What's there. And I know that uh, the Rio Grande out Yep, the Rio Grant. There, you got another prop there. You're I do. I just happen to have this one, so you know, hunting life is always there. Go, go ahead. Yeah, but uh, but I think yeah, they're uh, uh, they went to what a one turkey limit out west on yeah. Rios. Is yeah. that correct? Hey, yeah, hey, hey, hey we might have to dial a friend here. It's a it's a county by county basis, and that's what they're going to have to look at. the The biggest changes for the turkey regs. I'm not sure where that caller's at, but but this next year. Any turkey that you kill or harvest in the state is going to have to be checked in online with us. Okay. And so you're going to have to download these apps on your phone to do that. And uh, it's, it's a sign of the wave of the future. This, so these paper licenses, um, these are fixing to be a thing of the past. And, and we all know it's going that way, but the long, yeah, longer going to be the days where you pull a tag off and actually put it on the carcass of a turkey, you know. We're still going to do that this year, but you still got to check them in, right? Yeah. And, hey, just so everybody knows, too, as game wardens, we're we're not running roughshod over people. We understand that, that uh, this change is confusing, and we understand that these laws are confusing. And so, hey, we're going to have a pretty big dose of discretion out there with you. Correct. And, hey, and let, Unless you live in Van Zandt County, and then we're going to have absolutely zero discretion. Yeah, absolutely zero. <laughs> but hey, uh, that is a good thing. They want to know where these turkeys are getting killed because they are studying these things, and it is the best. Um, the older I get, I do like turkey hunting. I like wing shooting and mm -hmm. all that, but the the turkey population has really went down and there's probably a number of reasons for that, but they're trying to figure out some of that stuff. So uh, when, yeah, whenever the state asks you, Hey, yep. uh, what did, what did you harvest? Where was it? Hey, uh, just be mindful yeah. and try to help them out if you could. Yeah. So just so speaking for the department and, and so I, how many years you got on with the state Randolph? I, I believe 22. Okay. Yeah, I got to check. So, it's a day by day basis. <laughs> oh yeah, we can fire you tomorrow. Don't don't you worry none. I've got a, looking at your file right now. So hey, so I've got I've got twenty six on, and slowly but surely, yeah, we're we're headed away from this. But we're lost in two different worlds. We're we're in this digital world where hey, right now you can buy a digital license with us, and hey, you can go deer hunting and you can tag your deer online on that phone, and and never pull a actual tag off of a license and put on there that that uh, little app gives you a number for that deer and you just write it down on a piece of paper and tape it to it the other side of that world is we're still stuck in this world so and we're trying to transition but hey it's it's a, hey, it's, it's a it's rough working a little bit hey probably checked a couple hundred hunters since dove season yeah. hey, i bet i only looked at about two or three paper licenses. Yeah. so everybody hands me their phone now and it's hey, is for you as a warden is that off putting? Uh, it it uh, it is different. Uh, the only thing that I really don't like about it is uh, when when you're on the boat and people are handing you a thousand dollar iPhone across the water for you to take a look at their license and uh, yeah. 
Hey, that's, yeah. uh, hey, that's not comfortable. So a lot of times I'll just uh, say, hey, just show it to me while they hold it, you know, because yeah. I don't hey, want it's to. It's a, you know, hey, back to squirrel dogs. Hey, it's old dogs and new tricks because, hey, I worked at Birdfield in Hunt County. Hey, this field's full, full of hunters. And remember, 99.9% .9 of the folks we run into are, hey, good, hey, good people. Anyway, hey, they're all out there and they want to show you their license, right? Because they don't pay good money for it and they're happy to show it to you. And I start checking this field and everybody keeps handing me their phone, right? And so then, as the old guy, I put my glasses on, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just hold it out here, and then back and back and forth, you know. And then I think, hey, I think I find the right endorsement, and I give it back to everybody. There's probably I don't know, 35, 40 people in this field. I got to, I get to the last guy, the the 40th guy in the field, and he actually gives me a paper license, to which I give him a hug. Okay, <laughs> maybe <laughs> it made me. And you're wanting people to switch over, Steve. I know, I, and I get it too. It's just a uh, hey, no one likes change, including myself. What's your recommendation for areas with poor cell service? A hey, great, okay. great question. Hey, so the system is is set up for that. So when they download that license in their app, even if they don't have service, we roll up. It's there, okay. <laughs> um, and we have ways of getting around that. We worry. Uh, hey, listen. Every time I see us pushing this this digital age, I think about my dad trying to tag a deer with his phone. All right. Now, listen, to be fair, he could barely tag it with a real license before. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Get Randolph's laughing. <laughs> but with the phone service the way it is, that that becomes a challenge. And hey, all of our tech folks and the companies that we employ to do this, they're working around that. And they, they ensure us, hey, if you were to shoot a deer uh, in the middle of, hey, you're out in Childress, okay, in some canyon, and you shoot a deer and you get on that app and log it in, as soon as you get the cell phone service, it's spinning it up. Okay? Yeah. Now, I'm sure out there in Childress, uh, hey, the, the local wardens hey, are going to try to work with them, all right, unless it's somebody they know they've been round and round with. You know? so, so don't be that guy. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty... that answer your question, Ren? Yes, it sure did. Okay. And we actually have a few more from um, our attendees. So I'll mm -hmm. give you all another question. Uh, my son is nine. I bought him a license mm -hmm. because I wasn't sure how it worked while hunting with me. Does he need the hunter's education course? Okay. Uh, he does need a hunting license and he is not, uh, he don't have to get a hunter safety course till he turns 17. But mm -hmm. during that time, he needs to be in, um, in normal voice distance of a uh, adult hunter or somebody with hunter hunter safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, hey, and a lot of yeah. people ask, hey, uh, my nine year old, uh, we're going dove hunting in the morning. Does he need a license? And uh, yes, it is different from uh, fishing to hunting. But yes, let's say the nine year old, you're going to take him out deer hunting, and uh, so he's going to need to uh, tag that deer if he gets something. So. So everybody, regardless of age, has to have a hunting license. Now, for a fishing license, um, you don't have to have one of those till you turn 17. God, it's complicated. Hey, somebody asked me this the other day, Steve. Sure. Right, uh, my grandson from out of state, he is 14 years old, uh, and he wants to come down here and go hunting. What kind of license does he need? Yep. Yep. Hey, he's just gonna he's just gonna get the regular hey out of state license. So is what he's going to get. But it yeah. is the cheap license, correct? Yeah, the cheap the cheap one, yeah, yes. $7 correct. license, correct. a non-resident year. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and we're starting to talk about all these changes and going yeah. paperless. There are several other states that's already been doing this the last six, seven, eight years, and yeah. hey, they're not having any issues with it at all. Yeah. And one backward state being right here to the north of us is Oklahoma. So yeah. uh, if them guys can do it, we can do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, so back to that 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 nine-year-old too so so fun fact for his parents to think about he can actually at nine take hunter education now if he wants to uh, a great. lot of kids a lot of kids take it in different ways hey a lot of them again back to technology are taking it on online a lot of them wait if they're in a rural area a lot of them wait till they're in high school and they take it in high school using one of the shooting sports programs or one of the ag programs over um at the high school but 
that's that's the two ways they do it. But hey, they've lowered the age to nine, so he can actually take that. So, but it's up to that parent to, you know, think about. Hey, is at nine is he old enough to understand what he's taking? And if he's from West Virginia, hey, if uh, we accept any um, any hunter's education from out of state, any other state, mm -hmm. yes, oh yeah, hey, all fifty states. So yeah, mm -hmm. we take it out of any, once they take it in another state, hey, it's good forever. So. <laughs> So I'll uh, ask the next question. Can a paper license be added to the online system? Can a paper license be added to the online system? No, no. So they still have the opportunity to check that deer in online on the on mm -hmm. the uh, My Hunt app. They can do that, but they're not going to have the actual digital license and they are encouraging everybody to get used to doing that but once you get the actual paper license and if that's what you bought that's what you're stuck with for that that season correct randolph that is correct okay. yep. <laughs> and, uh, yep that is right and a lot of people are tagging it with their paper license and going ahead like you said right. and uh logging them in and uh and hey if you log them in you know and i think i run into that last year somebody tagged it and logged it in and right um, yeah there was uh there was something with that but yeah i would uh hey i would take as long as i've seen it logged in you know when everything's on the up and up i would accept that yeah yep. <laughs> so we're going to kind of shift back to dove dove season a little bit uh so most dove hunts are in deer country where corn feeders are scattered around what are the regulations about dove hunting around these feeders? Ooh, that's a that's a hot one. I'm going to give that to Randolph. Go ahead and take it, Randolph. <laughs> yeah, hey, we're fixing to catch you. You know, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, to be honest, hey, we've got to prove that uh, you know you're those dove are going over there to that bait, flying down this tree line, going into that feeder, and you're setting up there. You know. Um, you know, you need to give yourself a lot of distance. And I, I I'm not going to, I, there is no distance, but if you're set up there right on top of it, uh, you're subject to a citation. Or if you're 100 yards, 200 yards, and that's where they're going, uh, yes, you are subject to a citation. And it's best not to put yourself in that position. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't be underneath that feeder. Okay. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's Van Sant. That's what that is. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, that's hey, that's a very gray area, and it depends on hey on the circumstance too, and who is there. Hey, what warden's there? Hey, I've seen U.S. Fish and Wildlife agents take that awful serious, you know. And you get into that, like Randolph said, where are those dove going? Yeah, are they going to that feeder, and you're shooting them in in route to that? Hey, be be careful, know where you're at. What's going on? Okay, next those, are really, those are really good questions. Yeah, we have quite a few actually. Um, so how all, close? All coming from Larry Hand, probably. He's trying, <laughs> to, he's trying to stump us, Randolph. <laughs> <laughs> how close to a perimeter fence can you place a stand? Oh, that's, that's an a easy really one. Good question. Yeah, let me let me hey. have the easy one, Randolph. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, so the simple answer is there is no distance. Uh, you can put your stand right up against the fence. And we see that a lot all through the state. Now, is it neighborly? And we see a lot of hurt feelings and we see a lot of angry neighbors when somebody comes in and doesn't communicate with their neighbor and puts that, that deer stand right up on top of the fence. So before you do something like that, and hey, I get it in certain places you have to, but before you do that, hey, visit visit with your neighbor. But the answer is, hey, there is there is no distance. Now, it is illegal for you to discharge your, your rifle, your weapon, hey, across a property line. So they can put it, they can put it up on that fence, but they can't shoot back onto the neighbor's property. So yeah, that's a really good question. And I I, I had that same thing happen two uh two days ago. And, um, Hey, this, uh, this stand is right here on my fence and, uh, his feeder is out there in his pasture and they're mad, uh, wanted me to do something about it. And there's nothing that I can do about it. And I said, okay, what if he, uh, swapped his stand with his feeder? And they went, 
well, I don't like that either. <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah because uh, now yeah. they're shooting towards your property if the feeder's right up there next to it. So, hey, everybody, everybody get along. But uh, yeah, play, hey, play hey, remember, nice. hey, remember <laughs> about six or seven years ago, the state actually looked into putting a distance uh, yeah. from there. And that didn't, uh, that was, uh, that did not yeah. work well at all that, either. Yeah. As, as fragmented as everything is getting, especially over in this part of the world, everything's, and I'll have to tell all your viewers, everything's getting chopped up and cut up. And hey, what was, you know, 525 acres is now cut up to, you know, 18 acre lots. This is a topic for, for sure. Hey, let me, let me address the next question that always comes after this question, because we do this enough, Randolph, you know what the next question is, mm -hmm. is, hey, I shoot a deer on my property, all right, but he runs over to my neighbors, okay, mm -hmm. and I sight from my stand on top of the fence, I see him die out there. Can I go get that deer? You cannot, and uh, and what I tell everybody about this, and hey, this is uh, this has been a this has been an issue for a long time. Hey, have a uh, have an understanding with your neighbor ahead of deer season. You know, mm -hmm. y'all go to lunch and y'all go figure this out, and not wait mm -hmm. till you know. Hey, it's six o'clock at night. I just killed this deer, and can I go over there and get it? Um, mm -hmm. Call a game warden, but you need to call that neighbor, and you have to have permission to be on that property. Yeah, yeah. So, I, and I know we're talking to the choir. Right? So, hey, cattle, cattle raisers, they they understand this about getting along with your neighbor. But there's a lot of folks moving in, right? From parts unknown, and they they don't know that. Hey, they don't know to have all your neighbors in your phone. You know, and, and maybe have that agreement with them of, hey, I'm going to deer hunt over here. And if I shoot one, um, he runs over there. If I can go get it, that'd be good. Hey, and if you shoot one on your side, you know, hey, yeah, come get him uh, on hey, my hey, side. Hey, same thing with cattle. My bull gets over there in your herd. Can I go yeah. get him? Yeah. Uh, no, you're, you're going to need to call your neighbor. Hey, when yeah. y'all get him allotted, uh, <laughs> you know, let's make arrangements. Yeah. And I always heard good fences make good neighbors. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Randolph, do you you think this is all like cattle people or do you think there's like maybe some goat people involved in this whole call right now? Oh, yes. Hey, we're covering the whole state of Texas here. And I bet there's somebody from San Angelo that's got a that's got a goat down there somewhere and they're listening in right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I am with goat people, though, right? I mean, so yeah. I got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those are all really good questions. I like this. So so next question. I've had poachers on my place and I've left a voicemail for my local warden to report it. What should we know about po poachers and is there any way to discourage them? Yeah, there's a lot of ways to discourage them. And uh, hey, if you have somebody on your uh, on your property, you know, you can handle this. A lot of people don't feel comfortable going over there and, you know, uh, you know, hey, what are you doing? You know, making contact with them. And I understand that. Uh, but I would like for that to happen. 99% of the time, it is a huge misunderstanding. Uh, had one the other day, uh, got some dove hunters. They're out, uh, they're out popping and shooting dove. And hey, there's cameras everywhere. And the landowner lived up in Connecticut, uh, calls and said, hey, I've got hunters on my property. Well, I go out there and I find out that his property is for sale. And the realtor had give these guys permission to go out there. They were looking at purchasing the property. So they like, well, yeah, if y'all want to dove hunt, y'all go, y'all go ahead. So, you know, yeah. no fault of their own. But uh yes, I, I I did have a long conversation with this realtor. Uh and it wasn't right. But yeah, yeah hey, call your local <laughs> game warden and um yeah. and uh yeah, hey, try to um try to go around. Hey, I had this deal ha uh happen yesterday. Uh, some guys, they were dragging out something. I don't know what it was. It wound up being a pig uh, mm. and it was illegal. That was another story. But uh, the the landowner was right there. I'm I'm an hour away and uh, he could have just simply went down his road and got their tag number. And uh, uh, yeah. he wound up doing that and it all worked out. But hey, go get us a tag number because they entered your property from somewhere. And it's usually, it's usually a... Uh, it's usually a neighbor or something that don't, 
Uh, it's got 20 acres over there and you, it butts up to uh, your 1,000 acres and mm -hmm. hey, I, they may not be home and hey, I'm going to go try mm -hmm. it over here a little bit. And that, and that happens. Yeah. You know, hey, so let me let me add this to that. Again, there's a lot of folks moving in and we and this is we see this a lot, too. We'll get that call at, you know, on Saturday night at eight o'clock, nine o'clock. And uh, the landowner say, hey, I've got poachers because I hear shooting. All right. Just because you hear shooting doesn't mean you have poachers. Right? And, hey, it's Texas. Everybody's got a gun. Everybody wants to shoot. But. We've got to know, know that they're on your place. There's got to be a little bit more than that. And like Randolph said, 99% of the calls we roll out on to tres for trespassers is either somebody not even on somebody's place, and they're just hearing shots and becoming suspicious, or, yeah, a grandpa from a long time ago give Uncle Johnny, who give his nephew permission to come out there and run a hog trap or hog dogs, something like that. And when we show up and get everybody hemmed up, it always turns out of, uh, okay, whoops, yeah, they're okay. So, Are all native game animals property of the state of Texas? Oh, that's a hot one. I'm going to give that to Randolph. Go ahead, Randolph. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, but uh, the short answer, uh, it is yes. Uh, the, all, the, all the wildlife belong to the state of Texas, and uh, that's why we have regulations, and that's why they hired me and Steve uh, to help well, regulate. Well, hang on, let me let me give you the more politically correct answer as a as a wildlife guy. Hey, all all the game animals in the state are the citizens of the state of Texas. is is more accurate, I think. So the state regulates them. They uh, hey, with our biologist and regulatory staff, and hey, with game wardens like Randolph McKee. But they, hey, they they belong to the citizens of the state. You're close, Randolph. You're close. I'm close, yeah. <laughs> I need to go back to game warden school, I guess. <laughs> hey, I know a cadet going there. So <laughs> yes, hey everybody. Uh, Captain Steve Stapleton has uh, got a son that just graduated from Texas A and M University, and uh, in um, just got hired on to the Texas Parks and Wildlife. Uh, department to be a game warden and he goes to starting his the academy down in uh down in hamilton down there down there at star texas to be exact is where our uh game warden multi-million dollar um facility down there it is really really nice and uh he is starting there october the first and uh yep. we wish him all the luck yeah so. hey and, and and nobody is uh more nervous than this guy right here okay because <laughs> garrett my little aggie hey he don't know enough to know but you and i know <laughs> and uh hey they're uh, just for for the folks at home wondering how, how we how we hire folks hey we're we're rough on them in the academy and the academy is not a simple thing hey to get hired is not a simple thing but this uh this little aggie hey he's worked his tail off i'm awful proud of him uh to get in but uh it's a long process, and once you get in at day one, that's when it really starts. And uh, that academy gets longer and longer and longer because the duties of a peace officer, which which game wardens are in the state, um, are more and more and more as you turn the TV on and see what's going on. But hey, that that kiddo, that Aggie is going to be in that academy if everything works out right. Oh like, yeah, for eight for eight months. Hey, do you remember when you went 26 years ago? <laughs> hey, we were hey, we were down on the bad side of Austin, Texas, off of 51st Street in a warehouse. And it was plenty rough now. And I've I've been playing this game with Garrett all week about, you know, back in the old days, you know, we had to wear Dickies uniforms there, you know, and nobody cooked our meals for us. Where he's headed now is probably the the, the premium state conservation um game warden academy in the world in the world period, period. definitely yeah indeed. and um, it's 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 recognized by everybody it's in the middle of nowhere out in hamilton which is good because that's what what game wardens do it um and pay five-star facilities all the way around uh a whole cafeteria with staff and on fridays randolph is a homemade cinnamon roll day 
That is right. <laughs> now, when you and I were going to the academy, we had we picked up microwave. a sleeping roll from the Seven Eleven. <laughs> yeah, well, we had a microwave and some pop tarts, and that was about it. <laughs> so, not one world, man. Not one world. But. Um, well, how can someone prevent the natural movement of game animals by building hyphens? Uh, that's Randolph. Take that one. That's another bad one. I <laughs> <laughs> know. Uh, hey, I believe high fences um, have done a lot of good for wildlife, and um, and you know the the quality of deer have definitely gotten better and everything. But uh, you know, I it I, they're still building them right now. South Texas, they are everywhere, and people are uh, managing these deer, you know, and um, and making them. Uh, making them a lot better. So, hey, uh, I do not have a problem with high fences. Steve? Well, <laughs> I'll take the counterpoint here. Uh, it, it, whoever asked that, it's a very logical question. Uh, in our code somewhere, there is, there's actually a, a statute saying, hey, no one will uh, prohibit the movement of wild animals. However, you are in Texas, and hey, landowner rights are king. And so there's a very delicate balance there. But uh, high fences, and it's funny how they've evolved over the years. Take a trip down to Fredericksburg right now, and you'll see a lot of folks with high fences, and they're not to keep the deer in. They're to keep the deer out of the vineyard or the organic garden uh, or, or the alfalfa field, whatever they got going. So they work, they work both ways. Um, you can legally put up a high fence in the state of Texas. Now, if you start get if you go down that road of getting into what we call the deer business, heavily regulated, um, heavily checked off by us. Ask Randolph how he's he's had two or three high fence uh, deer breeder inspections he's had to perform this past month. Uh, it's complicated, you know, that, and, but, and that's why there's but, a lot of exotics <laughs> down there in uh, you know central and south Texas. Uh, mm -hmm. You know they uh, those fences got washed out and fell down yeah. and. Uh, so there's a lot of some yeah. people like that and some people hate that. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, hey, that just got, we, got that, that exotic started down there in the country yeah. as you well know. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we, we've seen it over here in, uh, in Van Zandt County, over in Grand Saline. There's once upon a time was a big, big high fence. They come in and, and stock the place full of all kinds of crazy exotics. And hey, the Sabine River will get up and it did. And hey, it mashed that fence down. And so it's not unusual to to be driving through Fruitvale and, you know, there's an axis deer out in the middle of the road. So it's an, another topic. Yep. Let's see what Next other question? Uh, this one. What is the name of the app that y'all are using? Yep, it's called Hunt, Hunt Harvest. Right there. Yep. Outdoor annual. Yes. Well, okay. Yeah. So, outdoor yeah, annual. So and then from there, you go to the Hunt Harvest app. And I wonder if I put this QR code in there. Look at this. Boy, this is technology meeting its maker here. See that? <laughs> Hunt and fish. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's the both of those apps will get you to the same place. That Texas Hunt and Fish app. That will get you the outdoor annual tagged in there too, but that's where everybody is is encouraged to go. Hey, tag all the critters you're going to shoot this year, and you're going to see more and more checking in or tagging. Hey, and remember, right now it's just for turkey and or deer if you have a digital license. But as the years progress, you're going to see everything migrating to a digital e system. So someone asked the question, will we have any mercy if cell phone batteries die in a field, you know, using maps and cold weather can zap a battery very quickly? Hey, so so Randolph isn't as mean as he looks, all right? <laughs> but but he is a trained investigator, and he is going to look at your phone if that were to happen <laughs> and and probably help you out uh, the right way by, by charging that in his truck for you, and maybe y'all would just sit together and get that all lined up on the e-system, I think. So, right, Randolph? That is correct. You're right the, again, Steve. The, the people's <laughs> game warden right there. So, hey, again, um, every game warden in the state sees what's happening, and, and we again, we're going to have a pretty, pretty easy hand as far as regulating some of these laws.
Okay. But now that's not to say that you can't get in trouble, but we're going to be really common sense with this stuff. So let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> so next question is I'm in Collin County. Mm -hmm. I was told we have to start logging any deer we kill. If so, where do we go to do that? And how much time do we have? So, so you're, you're going to go to that, that Texas hunt app where you're going to go and you're going to log it in right right there and that's those core counties over there that is th those core archery counties of grayson collin dallas and rockwall rockwall yeah yeah but but yeah download that out that'll get you going i have messed with it pretty simple to use if i can use it anybody can use it but do have it on your phone that's that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna line it up at and that's where you're gonna put it in so next question, can a private landowner with high fence own his deer that do not belong to the state? You want me to take it, Randolph? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> great, a great, great question. And I feel like all these retired game wardens are the ones asking these questions. <laughs> but that's a great, that's a great question. Uh, hey, this has been all the way through the court system. When and this sounds counterintuitive, but let's just say that you have a, a a deer breeder in Collin County, and hey, he buys deer okay from somebody else. Those deer are still the citizens of Texas, even though he bought them, okay, even though he paid money, but he's paying money to have them in his place to manage them as he sees fit. Hey, with our uh, oversight, and there is a lot of oversight. Hey, a lot of these deer breeders, not a lot, all of these deer breeders in the state. Um, have to go through a lot of hoops, a lot of permits, a lot of paperwork and inspections to do what they do. And yet they they do own the deer, but they're still the citizens of the state of Texas deer. So so when they when they harvest them, they turn them out and for harvest or whatever, they're still regulated by us. Good a very good question. Are there any new specific rules or changes to hunting regulations this year that everyone should be aware of? So this whole book, <laughs> something's <laughs> always changing. I, just like the turkeys, they're a little bit slow and everything. I, uh, something is always changing. And hey, uh, most everything is in that outdoor annual. You can yeah. find it on your phone. And mm -hmm. hey, I'll tell you, if you want to, if you want to Google Randolph McGee, uh, uh -oh. Google, Google me up there and it will come up with my state phone number mm -hmm. and you can give me a call anytime, day or night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, hey, hey, I had to call the game warden down there at uh, Louisiana the other day to find out what we could, uh, to find out what we could fish for. And hey, that's our job. And yes, uh, more than happy to take your call. But as yeah. far as, hey, something is always changing. So yeah. uh, dates and uh, yeah. season openers and, uh, you know, something's always changing. Yeah. But uh, yeah. but nothing really drastic that I can think of except for turkeys this okay. year. Yeah. Where might someone find that printed book if they didn't want it on the app and they actually wanted a physical copy? We've got a lot of uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife offices scattered throughout the state. Uh, that'd be a really good spot, you know, um, Hey, a lot of people said they couldn't find them at Walmart, and uh, and yeah. I was there the other day, and my Walmart had uh, nine boxes of them. So, but uh, yeah, but, yep. But uh, so so it's funny. If a few years ago, we we got really over aggressive and really trying to phase out that book and just go all digital, and there was a small uprising. <laughs> okay, and we went to they went to print the book back the next year just because so many people like like the printed version. Yeah. Uh, yeah, again, hey, any of the Walmart, any place that you get, get your license. They should have should have that book. When you get the book, there's always a section there at the fishing that says, "Hey, what's new this year?" And then in the hunting section, there's a there's a section that says, "Hey, this is what's new this year." And a lot of it is is fine minutia for this county or that county. Um, again, it's a it's a lot of info to take in. It really it really is. So, and we and we realize that. And like Randolph said, not to uh, and I'm sure everybody knows is, hey, if you, you know, if you're a cattle raiser, you, you should have your game warden's number in your phone. That should be just like having your cattle ranger's number in your phone. You should have your local game warden. 
uh, number your phone. Odds are they both know each other. And that's uh, hey, that, that's step one. And you can always feel free to, to call your local game warden with a question. Now, remember, they're busy. Okay. And I have to preface that because I get a lot of calls about, hey, my guy won't call me back. Hey, um, he's he's got more going on that you know, right? And I'm not going to go into border ops right now, Randolph, because I know you don't want to talk about that. But mm-hmm. hey, these uh, these game wardens, and I supervise a bunch, uh, not only are they dealing with hunting, fishing, water safety, public safety, um, this, that, programs, uh, but they're also uh, entangled in the whole border operations down south. Not not by their own doing, but we serve at the good leisure. Uh, you know, we serve at the at the discretion of the good governor. So uh, right now, we have so many wardens sitting down on the border as we speak. So keep that in mind when you're looking for your warden. They'll be they'll they'll get back to you when they can. But always feel free to bump them with a question if you find something you just don't understand. Where would someone find a hunter training course near them? Mm. Mm, good question. Hey, uh, our website is uh, really good about that. Texas TPWD, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Uh, go up there and click on the uh, the uh, hunter education, um, hunter set, hunter safety. I think it's called hunter education, and it will show all the courses. Uh, whenever we put on a course, uh, it will go into that. Um, get on the internet there and it'll show all over the state of Texas when you can take one. And I believe it's 17 and older or 18 and older. Hey, you can just simply take it online. Um, I wish they would change that. They haven't yet. That's still in the, that's still in the works as well. If you, if you Google just Texas hunter education, our site's going to pop up and there, and you'll see the opportunity to, Hey, take it online be a couple of, of avenues that way. And then you'll see some in-person courses, which are becoming a rarity, but there's still several venues that do that. Hey, uh, there's a lot of them that happen at, uh, not to throw names around, but hey, at your local academy, Bass Pro, Cabela's, uh, some of our offices. So So we've uh, not talked about this one yet, but what are the regulations for mountain lions? Good. That's that's another one, Randolph. (laughs) That's All a right. hot topic in the, in the legislature. He <laughs> take it? some mountain lines. And, yeah, uh, hey, I do. I do. Yeah. yeah hey, hey so. uh, that's from uh, a sh- really? this question's from a sheep person, Randolph. I oh, yeah. They got, I got a lot of sheep <laughs> yeah. out here. Hey, yeah. we, get, we get a ton of mountain lion calls. And no, up, up in my country, now, this is a great state of Texas. It is huge, but uh, Black Panthers and all that kind of stuff. All right. Right now, the legal. Answer is they are <laughs> legal to kill. Uh, got to have a hunting license. Got to have permission to be on that property and uh, yada yada. But as we're sitting there saying that, hey, Texas is wanting to start putting a little regulation on them. And uh, hey, and I know a lot of ranchers and everything. And man, they they kill way more deer than they do cattle. I just yeah. uh, and goats yeah. and things like that. Hey, they they kill a lot of deer, and um, but a lot of times these mountain lion sightings are are uh, not what they're cracked up to be. <laughs> so, but yeah. I know hey out hey out west, um, hey they 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 catch them out there and they kill them. A buddy of mine here last year had a big one run over up there north of Amarillo, and uh, I think some guys that uh, called up one in Abilene. And hey, that's Abilene's not too far down the road, so uh, mm-hmm. they are they are mm-hmm. around, but you know, uh, haven't seen any over out east. Yep. So, so the the formal de- the formal answer is hey, there hey there is no season. You can certainly shoot, hunt one, take one, and all you got to have is a hunt license okay? and and permission to be wherever you're at. So next question, I bought my super combo license online and received my paper license and mail. Mm-hmm. Uh, can I use that either if fishing or must I have my paper license with me on the boat? Or we like to, uh, we like, if you have your license uh, and it is while you're actively hunting or fishing, it's uh, in our law book that you are required to have that on you. Uh, you know, hey, is it over there in your truck 50 yards away? I'm not making a big issue of that, but uh, 
if uh, and it is not our obligation to start digging it up and calling our headquarters to find out if you have one or not. So, um, so yeah, it is it is required by law to have it on your person while you're actively hunting and fishing. Okay, well, we'll let everyone um, ask a few last minute questions. Um, we are wrapping up on time, but while we let the um, attendees ask their last few questions, do y'all have any last remarks you'd like to share with the group or any last things that come to mind? Hey, um, I just from my, hey, uh, I'm really glad you reached out to us to uh, come and do this. I, it's a lot of fun. It is really something different. It's kind of like talking to a T post, but a little bit different, you know, uh, but yeah, I'm sitting in a room by myself and Hey, it has been a lot of fun. So, uh, but yeah, Hey, uh, thanks for uh, that. And Hey, those were some excellent questions. And I, hey, hey, if you have any problems or everything, anything, Hey, call your local game warden. Hey, you can look their number up. Uh, you can call the sheriff's office, get that warden's number and uh, they'll be there to help you out. Okay, so we did get a few um, last minute questions. I came across a very large coyote. Um, I was told it was a red wolf. What What are your regulations? Let me have it, Randolph. Let me right, go it. ahead. Let me have this up. one. Okay. <laughs> now, me speaking as a wildlife biologist, okay, and a naturalist and a game warden, I I wish we're gonna get blowback on this, Randolph. So be prepared. I wish we had wolves here. Hmm. We don't. All right. Um, you've got really, really good odds. That's just a big coyote. I promise you. So uh, with that said, hey, uh, you know, and I'm not sure if they're wanting to take take this say uh, a coyote or what. But but if you ever were to really get a hold of what you think is a wolf, hey, we'll entertain the call. We'll certainly put you in touch with our biologists because they love to hear about it because uh, that that would be an ecological milestone for the state of Texas. Yeah. And Hey, a lot of other things, a lot of people don't realize, and Hey, I didn't realize it till I become a game warden is the amount of exotic, uh, pet trade uh, mm -hmm. out there and people going out and buying some kind of 99% hybrid wolf. And yeah. Hey, uh, we, Hey, there's been some monkeys running across the state, you know, that get loose <laughs> from these places. So again, are we talking about Mike Boone or just monkeys? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, Hey, there's uh we've been to some houses. Hey, they, what, they got a tiger out of a place in Dallas here the other day. So uh, yeah. nothing yeah. is, Nothing's off limits. We we get that call a lot, kind of like uh, uh, panthers, and uh, and I every time it's it's a cow. It's always a big big cow. So, good question though. Can game wardens enter private property without a valid reason, probable cause? Randolph, you better take that one. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. We uh, we have the right to go anywhere where wildlife is known to range or stray. Uh, if I don't have any uh, reason to go on your property, I am not going on your property. But if somebody says, hey, I get a call. Hey, I uh, got one the other day. Hey, I think my neighbor over there is placing some bait to hunt some ducks. Hey, am I going in there to look at the, see if there's some bait? Uh, yes, I am. And um, and that's, uh, that's how that is. But uh, yeah, we can go anywhere where wildlife is known to range or stray. And and of course we hey we we're so busy that that's not really a common occurrence. Hey, most of the time we know whose property that is, and we're probably on the phone with them of hey man, <laughs> like, you mind if we go take a look or wherever? But but it's if if a game warden shows up on your place, something has happened, okay, and something probably that the landowner needs needs to know about. Yeah, or or we're simply in there just doing uh, compliance checks. You know, hunting season's rolling around. Hey, uh, you're going to come in there. Uh, we're going to come in there and and uh, and check it. Hey, and I I tell you what else too. Just just thinking of of uh, these new game wardens coming out too. Uh, like we're getting a brand new one up in Lamar County, and hey, as his supervisor, I expect him to drive drive around with a stack of business cards and meet and greet. Hey, and if you, you catch an open gate, hey, go in there and give them your card and tell them who you are. So, so this will be our final question. Mm. Uh, what are the current rules to depredation? Am I saying that correctly? Correct. Uh, livestock in Texas, either from bear, lions, or a wolf pack, um, moves in from New Mexico. 
is lethal removal a tool available for us to use? Mm, lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Yeah, oh, my. <laughs> Uh, so, our, I guess if you have a problem bear, um, hey, our biologists uh, out West Texas, out that way, uh, they do have the means of uh, going and removing that. Um, I just, I don't deal with that sort of stuff up there where I am, but I know, yeah, there's parts of Texas that's got a lot of bear in, uh, around there, you know, and if it's becoming a nuisance, uh, yeah, get a hold of one of your game wardens and uh, he'll get he'll get you hooked up with the right people to uh, help solve your problem. So, and I, actually, I say that was our final question. Our final question is, so are you wearing pants, Steve? <laughs> what do you think, Randolph? What do you think? Uh, I'm going with a running short. Okay. Final answer. Ren, what do you think? I was going to say shorts myself. So, sadly, I'm not sure what kind of podcast y'all think this is, but obviously, I'm wearing uniform <laughs> and gun belt, so... Jeez, <laughs> y'all should know. Y'all should know what kind of professional y'all take me for. Anyway, <laughs> hey, uh, Ren, hey, Randolph, uh, hey, all the viewers, hey, it's uh, been a pleasure talking to y'all. Hey, I know Randolph and I, hey, and all really all the wardens across the state, we, we appreciate who y'all are and what y'all do. Uh, hey, we're all on the same team. So, uh, if you, if you need a game warden, hey, reach out. We're, we're there for you. That's what we get paid for. We work, work for y'all. And um, to quote old cattle ranger, hey, uh, trust your neighbor, but brand your cattle, okay? <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on October 15th for our next webinar, um, talking about bull buying budgets. So we look forward to seeing you then. Randolph and Steve, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you.